anyone, virtually anyone who sings church music knows that piece as I Was Glad by Hubert Parry. I've always loved it ever since I sang beside someone I'm still in touch with and know at school in the school choir and thought what an amazing piece and it's sung almost always as part of Evensong. It was actually written for a coronation in 1902 um, but it is sung as part of Evensong and I've always liked, loved Evensong. Why have I loved Evensong? Well lots of others do and it seems to be a fantastic balance that it has. It has a balance between woman praising God because she's going to give birth, man saying, it's okay, I can die now in peace because, it, because things have gone well and I've seen Jesus, the child Jesus, and an Old Testament lesson and a New Testament lesson. Um, it Also, it's being done nowadays 450 years after it was started, invented by the hero Thomas Cranmer, um, in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, the US, Africa, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, Amsterdam, in Catholic churches, in all manner of other denominations. Atheists, avowed atheists, love it. Stephen Fry loves it. Richard Dawkins goes to it in, at New College, Oxford. It is an amazing art form and people love it. How did it start? Well, it started at the grim time we know as the Reformation, when England decided to go it alone. Does that ring a bell? And the man who led it was the Archbishop of Canterbury, who was Thomas Cranmer, complete hero. Now, he was um, Archbishop of Canterbury, first of all, under Henry VIII. So he good, got good practice at dealing with awkward people. Um, here he is, large beard. Um, and he then um, was under Henry VIII and he just helped Henry VIII escape from Catherine of Aragon. And Henry VIII didn't seem to want much more from him, apart from various things to do with the Reformation. Then, Edward VI, after that, he was able to get on with all sorts of reforms. And he was so good with the English language that he was able to produce the Book of Common Prayer, which is exquisite. And people still feel that it's exquisite. And it's still widely in use, as we know. Then after that, it was his misfortune that um, Mary came, Catholic Mary came to the throne. She made him recant and everybody agreed that he should recant and say, I was wrong about all that. Um, and so he recanted and everyone was happy. But Mary then said, no, I want him dead. Can you imagine it? The Archbishop of Canterbury, I want him dead. So um, she, he then gave a sermon in University Church in Oxford and it's so moving that you can still see it um, exactly the place he had been imprisoned it's here the ghastly prison which was demolished at the end of the 18th century um, and it was extremely secure they said then having given that sermon in which he withdrew the recantation so double negative um, he then went out and was burnt at the stake and there's a very moving place in the High Street in Oxford where there's a, there's a square of cobblestones where you can see what happened. Today, Evensong is sung to settings by all manner of wonderful composers, not just English composers, Bird, Tallis, Tonkins, going right the way through um, to Wesley and then Stamford, Parry, Howells, Swain, um, Arvo Pert um, and loads of people are, are adding to it and it's my firm conviction that people of all faiths and none should be able to join in the glorious music of the Christian Church. My next chat will be with the pair of geniuses that made our virtual call even song, Alex James and Matt Norris. 
And if you haven't seen that virtual even song, do go and see it on YouTube.